Hello, and welcome to the first part of your Python basics lecture. So in Python, everything is an object. And what we're doing here is called object-oriented programming, which is something that you'll continue to learn as you go through this series and take the next class 231. Since everything in Python is an object, it's probably pretty important for us to learn a little bit about them. Objects are basically concepts in Python, and they always have an ID. They usually have some attributes, they have zero or more names, and they have a type. For instance, you can see in the little output boxes here that we can have different objects in Python, like the integer three, the string hello, and the floating point number 1.23. And when we ask Python what type it is, each of these objects have a type. This one's an integer, this one's a string, and this one's a float. We also have IDs for all of our object. If you ask Python for the ID of an object using the ID function, it will spit out the uh, ID or address of that item. All right, since I brought it up, let's talk a little bit about types. Every object in Python has a type, and there's so many different types, but I'm gonna go over the most common ones. First, let's talk about numbers or numeric types. We have two main ways of representing numbers in Python. First is an, as an integer or a whole number, and second as a floating point number or a float, which has decimal points. Let's go to some Python code to check what type all of these different numbers are. All right, so let's look at some numeric types. I'm gonna set the variable x equal to one, and then I'm gonna ask Python to print out the type of x. I'm gonna go ahead and save, then I'm gonna open Platformio, new terminal. I'm gonna make sure this is the correct folder that I wanna be in, and then I'm gonna say Python three if you're on a Mac, and then the name of our file, Python basics three cw.py. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter to run our entire script. Awesome, so you can see that the type of x as printed out here is an integer, which hopefully confirms what you expected. All right, let's go ahead and set y equal to 6.34, and then ask Python to print out the type of y. Go ahead and save, then use our up arrow to rerun our script. Awesome, you can see that Python tells us that y is a floating point number, which makes sense as it does have a decimal unlike x. Finally, let's set z equal to 1.0 and print out type z. Save, let's run our script, and you can see that even though there, the decimal point is zero, this is still represented as a floating point number, which is why Python told us that this z is a float. Awesome, our next type that we're gonna talk about is a Boolean, and a Boolean is just a true or a false value. As we mentioned before, in Python, true is represented as a one and false as a zero. So let's go ahead and create some Booleans and then ask Python what type they are. All right, let's create a variable x and reassign it to be true. And again, you can see that this is a token or a keyword because true means something in Python. So once we do that, let's print type x and go ahead and run our script. Cool, so you can see that at the bottom here that Python has told us that x is now a Boolean value. And we can do this again with y equals false, which is our other Boolean value, and then print type y and run again. And you can see that both of these are Booleans according to Python. Next, let's talk about strings. Strings are our first collection, and a collection is just basically multiple objects that are shoved into a single object together. In this case, a string is a collection of individual characters put together as a string. There are three ways that you can declare a string. You can use one quotation, you can use double quotation marks, or you can use three single quotation marks to open and close a string. Now, the last one might look pretty familiar to how we did multi-line comments, and that's because it is. So if you ever have a string that needs multiple lines, you want to open and close them with those three single quotes instead of either of the other two. But let's go ahead and try these out. All right, so let's create three strings. I'm going to call them S1, S2, and S3. Now, all three of these are perfectly valid ways of creating strings, and inside them, I'm gonna put the word Chelsea, Chelsea, 
Chelsea. And just remember, if you ever need to have multiple lines within your string, the way to do that is using the three single quotes, because here I can do this, that's perfectly valid. However, it would not be valid if I did it this way, and you can even see that by the syntax coloring changing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and print out the type of S1, the type of S2, and the type of S3. Let's go ahead and run our program. Awesome, you can see that Python has told us that all three of these variables are indeed of the type string. I just wanna point something out really quickly because it seems like these two are very similar ways of creating strings and it's confusing that both of them exist. But here's one thing I wanna say. What if instead of the string Chelsea, I wanted to make that possessive and have the string be Chelsea's, as in this is Chelsea's class? Well, let's see what happens when I do that with this string. Hmm, okay, that looks wrong. Our string is now ended too early because we started our string with a single quote, but we needed a single quote inside of the string. When you need a single quote inside of the string, it's probably best to use a double quote or a triple quote in order to actually use that because, for instance, you can see here, this is perfectly valid and so is this. Let's talk about lists. Lists are another type of collection, just like a string was a collection of characters. Lists are a collection of different types of objects in Python. And actually, if you've coded in a different language, you might be a little confused because lists, unlike arrays, which are similar, uh, can have multiple different types of data inside of it. For instance, if you see on this right-hand side, this is a perfectly valid list that contains a string, an integer, and a floating point number. However, you also can have lists that have all the same type, like the one M here on the screen. So first I'm gonna say my list equals, and then I'm gonna open my list with square brackets. That's how we indicate that something's a list. And I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five. Notice that between each object in the list, we have a comma, and again, we're opening and closing with those square brackets to tell Python that this is in fact a list. Let's go ahead and save that and print out type my list. Save, let's go ahead and run that. And we can see in fact that Python is telling us that my list is well as it's named a list. Just to go back and show you again, let's create a new variable called my list two. And remember that if you've programmed in other languages, unlike arrays, lists can have multiple types inside of it. So let's put a string, hello, Let's put an int, 9, and let's put a floating point number, 1.2. We could actually even put another list inside this list, 5, there we go, and all of this is completely valid Python code. Let's go ahead and save and go back to our slides. All right, last but not least, let's talk about dictionaries and sets, which we're combining together because they both use curly brackets to indicate them. Both dictionaries and sets are also collections. They are multiple objects in a trench coat as one single object together. Now, dictionaries are pretty common and we love them because they use key value pairs in order to store information. Think for a second like we might want a dictionary representing a person. I can have this dictionary where there are a bunch of keys, what's on the left-hand side of the colon, name, job, the number of classes that I'm teaching. And then on the right hand side of the colon, we have values, which basically say, oh, of the person's name, what is it? Job, what is it? Number of classes, what is it? All of this is stored inside curly brackets, and like a list, we have commas in between each key value pair. A set looks kind of like a list that's made with curly brackets. The difference is a set is a collection of unique items. So if you have the same item in a set multiple times, the set actually automatically deletes repeats for you and only keeps unique items in your collection. All right, let's first create a dictionary. I'll actually create one called dog, and I am going to open and close my curly brackets, and then I will say the name of the dog. So this is the key. I'm gonna put a colon and then put the value. His name is uh, Baxter. And then I'm gonna put a comma so I can put another key value pair, which is going to be age. And let's say this dog is three years old. I'm gonna store that as an integer. 
And then I'm gonna put a comma so I can have another key value pair. And I'm gonna say breed, and I'm gonna say corgi as the value. Now I can go ahead and save this. Let's print type dog and see what Python says. Go ahead and run our code. Okay, so you can see as expected, the variable dog is the type dictionary. Now it may look similar, but sets are a little bit different. So let me call my set and say one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go ahead and just ping in there with me. I'm gonna print out my set and then I'm gonna print out the type of my set. Let's go ahead and save, run. And you can see that it printed out our set for us and told us that the type of this variable, my set, is in fact a set. Now, remember that I told you that sets are collections of unique variables. So what happens if I add five a couple more times to this set? Okay, let's go ahead and run that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we can see that even though we had a bunch of fives in the original set, Python has gone ahead and gotten rid of those for us, which makes sense because a set is a collection of unique items and we had multiples of the five. Like before, it knows that our variable my set is indeed a set. All right, last but not least, let's talk about constructors. So we talked about a bunch of different common types and how we can create them with variables, but we can also use something called a constructor to take an object and turn it into a different type. For instance, say I want uh, the number five, but I want it as a string of the character five, not an actual integer. I can use the string constructor str to take an object x that was an integer and turn it or cast it into a string. Similarly, if I wanted to take an integer, I could use that, use the floating point constructor and create a float from what was previously an int. Let's go ahead and go in our code and try that out. All right, so let's go ahead and have a variable. We'll call, we'll just call it five. And this is currently an int. I'm gonna go ahead and print type five, but I want it as a string. So I'm gonna say five equals str, that's the string constructor, and then put the variable five. This is going to take an object which was an integer and cast it to a string. Once we do that, let's go ahead and print out the variables just so we can see it, and then print type five so that we can see what the type is after we've used the string constructor. Let's go ahead and comment everything out because we're getting a lot of output here. Go ahead and save and run our code. Awesome, so we can see that before we did anything, our item five or variable five is an integer. Then we went ahead and changed it, printed it out, and now it is a string. We can also, as we saw before, do this using a float constructor. So let's take a variable six and set it equal to six, the integer. And then we're gonna print type six. And then we're gonna say six equals float six. We're casting the variable float into a floating, or excuse me, we're casting the variable six into a floating point number when previously it should have been an integer. Let's go ahead and print type six again and run our code. Awesome, so you can see here that the uh, variable six was an integer first, and then it was a floating point number after we cast it to float using the floating point constructor. Last but not least, I wanna show you something cool. So I'm gonna have this be my string, and I'm gonna set it equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But now I'm gonna print the type and then I'm gonna cast the variable my string to be a list using the list constructor. So let's say my str equals list my str. Let's go ahead and print it, my str. And then we'll go ahead and print the type my str. All right, let's go ahead and we'll comment this out just for ease of output, save and run this. Okay, so you can see that our string was originally a string and it printed out exactly as we saw. Then when we turned it into a list, Python actually took each individual character in the collection string and made them items in the list. 
So now instead of the string A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all as separate items in a list. And as you can see, when we print out the type, once we've cast it to list using the list constructor, uh, my string, kind of intuitively, is actually of type list. All right, that is all I have for you today. I will see you guys next time.